Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my awesome YouTube channel. And today we are going to discuss how do we read input from a user in Go programming language. And watch this one very carefully and attentively and you'll learn a lot of things about Go programming language. So what I'll do today is I'll just write some three to four lines of code which help me receive the input from a user or from the keyboard. And then I'll try to explain to you what those lines of code are doing. Okay, so the first thing that we might want to do here is we would like to prompt the user that, hey, user, please enter a number. So for doing that, I'll simply use the println function from the FMT package. And I would like to print on the screen, enter a number. Um, that's it. Okay, so now we actually need a way to read the user's input and store it in a variable in our program. So let me go ahead and declare a variable here, which is reader. And this reader variable will help us read some input from the user. So what is the reader variable? Uh, a reader variable is an instance of buffio.reader. And to create such a reader, I would say buff io dot new reader, and I will give it a source, which in this case will be the standard input of my OS. So uh, what have I done here? I have created a reader, which allows me to read user input. And the source of the input stream is the standard input, which in this case is the keyboard. The next thing that we would like to do here is actually use this reader we declared here to read some input from the user. So we will say input colon equal to reader. And then I would ask the reader to read a string. Okay. And we want to read this until and unless we encounter an enter character or a, a new line or a line break which is signified by backslash n okay uh, now that i have the user input with me stored in the input variable let me go ahead and just simply print this because as you all know go does not like it at all when uh, you know we don't use the variables that we declare uh, so i say fmt dot print input so this seems pretty straightforward. It's a short program and it is going to help us read users input. But there is a small problem that we are going to run into. So uh, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, and before doing that, in fact, uh, don't worry about the internal workings of buff, buffio.newreader. Uh, we, we'll, we'll check that out in due course of time. But for now, let's just focus on reading the user input and printing it. So if I say go, run input dot go what happens it tells me that there is an assignment mismatch on line number 15 which is this line and it says that there is one variable but reader dot read string returns two values well this is interesting isn't it in go apparently any functions or methods in this case it's a method and any functions and methods in Go can return more than one return value. And reader.readString in this case returns two values, whereas we are only making use of one value. So again, I am repeating that methods and functions in Go are allowed to return more than one return value. Now, if you are completely new to programming, just bear along and these things will get much more clearer in the future videos. But if you already know programming, then you can see that this is a very unique feature of Go. So what is this second value which is being returned by the read method in this case? And how do we actually go about using it? Let's try to see all of it. To demonstrate that, I have opened the documentation of the read string method in the Go documentation. Here it says that read string reads until the first occurrence of delim in the input, which is okay. So in this case, we will read until the occurrence of the backslash n character in the user input. Then here it says if read string encounters an error uh, before finding a delimiter, it returns the data read before the error. 
Okay, so the first return value of the read string is the data read before any error occurs, while the second value is the error which occurred itself. So uh, you guys might have also understood that read string, besides returning us the value that it read from the user input, also returns us any errors that might have occurred during the processing. All right, while all of this is fine, our program is still not running. So how do we go about fixing that? So there are two options. Let me show you the first one, which is we could simply ignore the second value, which this function returns to us. And we do that by what is called a blank identifier, which is signified by an underscore. Okay, so now if I run this program, I can see that it tells me to enter a number. Suppose I enter our favorite number, which is 42, and hit enter. I can see that the number gets printed on the screen. So what did we just do here? We asked Go to basically ignore the second return value from the read string function. And for doing that, we just placed a underscore at the second position on the left hand side of the assignment. So suppose if we wanted to actually use the other parameter, um, we could have used it. Let's say it was an error. Let's call it ERR. And we wanted to ignore the first parameter. We could just simply have an underscore right here. And it would also work provided that we are making use of this variable ahead in our code. Now, the second thing that one might want to do here is actually not ignore the second return value, which in this case is an error. So we can store it in a variable called ERR. And then maybe we could go with an if else setup. If ERR is not nil, which means that um, indeed there was some error in the processing of the read string function. And we might just uh, want to exit the program. So for that, I will go ahead and simply log the error and also uh, finish this program with the log.patal function. And let me print a, a message um, error while reading input. And if I go ahead again and run this piece of code, I would see that it again prompts me to enter a number and I say 42 and it prints the number back on my terminal. But the thing is that we asked the user to enter a number. And yes, he did enter a number, which is 42, uh, but we read it as a string. So the next thing that we would like to do here is convert this input from a string into an integer. Let's see how to go about doing that. So firstly, we need to take note of this line here that the read string method returns a string containing the data up to and including the delimiter. So which means that if the user entered a string similar to 42, it is not actually just 42, but it is 42 and a backslash n because the user input also includes the delimiter and the read string method also reads the delimiter. So the first thing that we would like to do here is remove this trailing white space or the backslash n character from our input string. So for doing that, I am going to make use of a function called trim space from the strings package. So uh, I will simply say uh, strings dot trim space uh, and there you have it in the auto suggestion. And the input to this function will be our variable, which is input. And let me uh, store it in a variable called uh, trimmed input. Yeah. Uh, and let me simply go ahead and print this trimmed input as well. I go to the terminal and when I run the program uh, and enter my favorite number 42, I see that 42 still gets printed. The next task that we want to do here is we want to convert this string trimmed input or we want to pass this trimmed input into an actual number. So for doing that, we will use make use of this package, which is which is called strconv. And from this package, we will use the function, which is 
parts in and we can read about it from the documentation of Golang. Um, so maybe you guys can read about it in your free time and I will actually go ahead and use this function. Uh, as we saw that this function again returns us two values which are an integer and an error and takes in three values. So um, uh, let me say n and let me ignore the other value for now which is an error and then I will say uh, strconf dot parse int integer and then I will give it the input which is trimmed input and I want to convert it into a number with a base of 10 which is a decimal number so I will give the base 10 and as for bits I can give 32 okay and then I will try to print n in the last line let me go to my terminal and let me run this program hmm expecting Oh man, I <laughs> it should be colon equal to and uh, we go ahead and run this. Okay, enter a number and I say 42. Okay, what happens when I do enter something which cannot be passed into a uh, number? It tells me zero, uh, but um, ideally I might want my program to fail. So let me actually make use of the error right here. So if I do have an error, then uh, probably I could repeat this entire if statement and I can say that uh, uh, input was not a number and we can ask our entire pro program to fail. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let me save this and let's go ahead and run this and it asks us to enter a number i say 42 and it gets printed again it asks me for a numerical input i say say rat and it says that input was not a number and exit status one and that is all i wanted to discuss about user input as of now so we learned a lot of things in this video we learned to read user input we learned that methods or functions in go can return more than one return value we saw that many of the times it is an error which should be either ignored or handled in some way we saw how to trim strings of leading and trailing white spaces we saw how to convert strings into integers or other numerical types and we wrote this small program to input a number from the keyboard and print it again on the terminal and i hope you enjoyed learning it as much as i enjoyed telling it to you Meanwhile, all of the code has been updated in this GitHub repository and you can refer to it anytime it's a pub public repository, which means that anyone is free to access it. And before I leave, do hit the like button if you find the content of the video helpful. If you find that these may benefit someone else, do share it with your friends and peer group. And do subscribe my channel if you like the content of my channel and like always, thanks a lot for watching.